I'm so glad that that's not how the story ends. I, I'm so glad that the story did not end in death. But say on the third day, something, something began to happen. If I could borrow your, your imagination for a moment, I, I need you to travel with me into the tomb. <laughs> I, I need for you to see things. I need for you to see the Father working some things out. One minute there lies. To sit it down yes. and I'll check it up again. Hallelujah. He's not a victim, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Yes. Yeah, he's not a victim. He's a triumphant God. And, and then I, I was reminded of when, praise him, you might be up here the whole time. I don't know. Uh, but, but I was reminded of the time when all of a sudden he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. And all of a sudden here come his betrayers. Here come the people that think they're on assignment to kill him. And they walk into the garden. And all of a sudden somebody says something about who is this Jesus. And all of a sudden Jesus makes a statement once again showing that only reason you can do anything to me is because I allow it. He, I am he. And the Bible says that they fell back dead men. That's a, that's a flex on God right there. Letting you know that if, if my voice can knock you to your ground, just imagine if I summons legions of angels on the scene. That's not how the story ends. Yeah, yeah, you, you, serve, you don't serve a pitiful God. You don't, you don't serve a God that got on the cross that couldn't get off the cross. You serve a God that understood the assignment. I, I was saying, what if Jesus would have sat down, and, and then my subtopic, if we get there, it was <laughs> love stood up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, love stood up. See, there was a time in the garden uh, that, that, that here it is, Jesus takes a few of the boys with him, and all of a sudden he said, now I need you to watch while I go pray. Just stay up. Just please don't go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, <laughs> praise him, go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and sit down. I, I'm not going to do this. Go ahead and sit down. Because I'm out there now. I'm, I'm gone. I'm yeah, dear Jesus, I'm gone. All of a sudden, here it is, Jesus takes a few of the boys with him, and he's going to pray. He understands. See, one minute, he's, he, he, he's in a place to where he un, he's riding in the town. We talked about that last week on a donkey. And, and he, he comes in, and everybody, Hosanna, son of David. And then he goes in the temple, and he whoops them up out of the temple. He, he cleans the temple out. And then all of a sudden, he goes from being popular. Now he's not popular anymore. They want to kill him real bad now. But then the week that's leading up to Friday, here it is. Jesus understands what's about to happen. So he goes into the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying and he's talking to the Father. And he, he makes this statement. He says, if, Father, if it's, if it's thy will, uh, let this cup, let this moment, let me not have to do what's, what I'm about to have to do. But not my will, but your will. Jesus had the opportunity then to sit down and not do what he was born to do. So then he goes back to the disciples and he, he catch him sleep. He, man, you, you tell me now you all couldn't stay up an hour? And, and, and then so he, he, he goes back again and, and he prays some more. And he said, he prays the same prayer three times. He said, Father, if... Uh, if, if it be thy will now, if I don't have to do this, I, don't, I really don't want to do it. But not my will, but, but your will. Yeah. And then he goes back another time, and he's, he, he finds the boy asleep again. He said, now you need to stay up and pray so that you don't be led into temptation. And, and the Bible said that, that you know, have you ever been so sleeping when you wanted to be up, but you couldn't be up, and your eyes just heavy? The Bible said their eyes were just heavy with sleep. I'm talking about that. The sleep monster was all over him. And, 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 and so Jesus goes back a third time. See, sometimes when, 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 when you are given the opportunity to make a choice, to stand up or to sit down on your assignment, you, you, you can't always depend on people. Many people are born who they are, were born to be because they are waiting on the crowd to go with them. 
And, and sometimes the crowd is asleep and you allow them to cause you to go to sleep on who God created you to be. So Jesus goes back the third time and he prays and he prays the same thing. But something happened then. Because prior to going to the garden, he talked about how he, that whatever he saw, whatever the assignment was, it, it caused him to be in great anguish. It caused him to be, I'm talking about pressure unlike any of us have ever seen. But he goes back the third time and he, 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 he gets what we call a breakthrough. He gets a breakthrough and says, you know, all right, now let's go do it. It didn't matter that the boy, he, and then he came back and he said, go ahead and sleep. Yeah, go ahead and sleep now. Because I have solidified what I have to do. So whether you are asleep or awake, it really don't have anything to do with what I got to do. I will sit here for this moment here. For such a time as this, that's why I exist. For such a time as this, that's why you exist. Will you sit down on what you were born to do? Just because you got a glimpse and the glimpse showed you something that was difficult, it was hard, it was going to cost you something, will you, will love cause you to stand up? Will love cause you to rise up? And once Jesus made the decision that, uh, okay, Father, let's go ahead and get it done. That's why I came. And I'm sure when he looked and saw what was going to happen, Maybe he looked in the cup and saw that he was about to take a journey where he was going to be hated and betrayed. Maybe he looked in and he saw that he was going to be beaten until he was unrecognizable. Maybe he saw that the, 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 the soldier was going to beat him and, and mock him and persecute him all night long. Maybe he saw the cross. Maybe he saw the agony of being stretched, hung high, stretched wide on a cross. Maybe he saw it, but then maybe after he saw all of that, maybe the thing that caused him to make a turn was you. Maybe he saw your face and said you were worth it. Maybe he, he, he saw that if I don't do this, then mankind don't stand a chance. And, and so I, I have to go through it. No matter what it costs me, I have to go through this. And the journey begins. From being celebrated, now we are on en route to the cross. But even in going to the cross, your Jesus made sure that it will be recorded. I'm not a victim. I'm still the soon coming, triumphant, glorious, righteous king. I'm still the one that has all power. I'm still the one that if I say it, it has to be done. I'm the, I'm the water walker. I'm him. I'm the one that walked past funerals and called the dead back to life. I'm the one that sickness and disease, they flee from when I come into a present. I, so I'm, I'm not the victim here. Don't you know if I raised other people, don't you know that if I really wanted to flex, I could come up off of this here? Don't you know that if, if I could cause you to fall down by just making a statement, imagine if I started talking a whole bunch over you. Imagine if I just really just kind of flex like the Father did when he created everything. I could cause your whole world to change and then step back and say, and it is good. Don't play. He's not a victim. He was on an assignment. Why is that important for you to know? Because sometimes you're viewing yourself as a victim because life gets a little hard. You better start looking at the assignment. To whom much is given, much is required. When you feel a little pain, you better understand. You better move into a place where you understand that the only reason it's happening is the little pain that you experience. But on the other side of it is somebody's deliverance. Yeah, I'm fully aware I haven't opened my iPad. Don't judge me. I will tell you that I, I did prepare. <laughs> I will tell you that. But I will tell you that now that we are, we are at the place where Jesus is hanging from the cross. And 
and, and he, 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 he realized now that, that I'm about to give up the ghost. Across, you got the two people up there with him and one acting a fool and, you know, still trying to, how are you on the cross with me and you trying to judge me? You guilty, I'm innocent. But then there's another fellow up there, and he realized that greatness is right beside him. So he, he, he looks over at the other knucklehead and says, stop, you don't know who this is. And then Jesus looks at him, even while he's up there on the cross, he says, this day you're going to be in paradise with me. Look at Jesus. And if you really look at it real careful, in order for Jesus to die, he had to give his spirit permission to leave his body. If he don't say nothing, it can't leave. He, the Bible says that he gave up. He, he, he gave up. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't die. He gave up. He, he gave his ghost, his spirit, permission to leave that body. He's not a victim, y'all. He's not a victim. And, and, and then there's already something in, in the works for him to borrow a tomb. <laughs> he ain't going to need it long. Just needed three days. Yeah, you can sell it again then, buddy. You can sell it again because he ain't going to need it. Matter of fact, you can make money off of this one here because this is going to be a historic spot for the rest of eternity because Jesus was in this. He was in this tomb. And then we have where for three days, there's silence. Disciples are crying. They're broken. All Jesus' followers, they're, they're, they're hurting. But then all of a sudden, on the third day, he told them, he said, guys, if you tear, if you tear the temple down in three days, I'd rebuild it. <laughs> in three days. He told them, say, now in three days, I'm coming back. There's nothing that can stop me from coming back because my life don't mean anything if I don't get up. Your deliverance was not in him dying. Everybody going to die eventually if you live long enough. But our victory was when, when they went back there and they tried to lie and say that, you know, the disciples stole Jesus' body. We got to justify this thing because the, the end of this thing going to be worse in the beginning. If this man really got up, and we tell the story the way that it is. We lose all credibility, all power. So we're going to pay these soldiers to say that they went to sleep. And while they were asleep, somebody came and stole Jesus' body. Now, you know, you, you, had, to pay, you, had, you had to pay them off pretty good because uh, if, if a soldier went to sleep uh, on duty, that's death back then. So, so they paid them off and... They lied, said that, but, but the, the problem was you could not prove what you said. And then all of a sudden, after three days, <laughs> after God done shook the tomb, and, and you know how, why, why you say he shook the tomb? Because the Bible says that, say that the, 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 the bones and stuff begin to shake. Yeah, yeah, something was going on behind those stones. See, I, if I, I'm a military guy. If I would have been, they, and, and they said, a guard that fella called Jesus. And then, first of all, if I'd have been in the garden and they'd say, and he'd have said, I am he, and I would have fell down and I would have got up. And then I would have got up stripping my uniform off. I'd have been bowing. Yeah. See, 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 there comes a time when you disobey orders. And that would have been one of those times. And then if I'd have been guarding the, the tomb and all of a sudden you, the, things start happening, it's a dead person behind the boulder. Now, see, we know that he don't have company. So all of a sudden, something getting to happen behind the boulder that I can't explain. Well, I ain't going to hang around to see what come out of that cave when I'm, I'm going to go tell my people, say, hey, I got to go. Uh, something's going on back there. Y'all said this. I don't, I don't know what's happening, sir, but I had to leave. And then here come, here come the ladies to... To, 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 to clean his body, to anoint his body, to prepare his body for burial. And then all of a sudden, you walk in there, he's gone, and then you come out, sitting on this big boulder is an angel. So I don't know why you're here. He's not here. I need for you to understand what the Bible is doing to you. 
There's a whole conversation going on. And, 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 and then all of a sudden you go back and you tell the boy, say, hey, hey, Jesus gone. And, and I met this fella, looked like an angel sitting on top of the boat with his legs all crossed. And, and tell me talking about he ain't there. And then all of a sudden we go and now we go back. Here come the disciples. They, they running, you know, just running up. Somebody outran somebody, probably John, called John Young. So John outrun all these jokes. And, 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 and he, but you know, you, you know what happens? He did all that running, but then when he got to the cave, he didn't even go in. He just, all of a sudden, he had a moment. So I just can't gonna run up in here. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, other things begin to happen. Then now we go back to the hotel, and then we lock the doors, and then here come, here come, here come Jesus through the doors. He didn't have a key. All, everything locked down, but here come Jesus. He's not a victim. Love stood up, and then he comes in, and, you know, Thomas out doing what Thomas doing, and, and all of a sudden, here we, Jesus comes in the room, and, 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 and you know, that'll blow your mind. See? See, see, I, I, I don't know about you. See, some of you give yourselves credit for things that you really didn't give yourself credit for because you know if you'd have been in that room and Jesus would have popped up in that room, you'd have ran through that door. I know you would have. Yeah, I know you would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd have had to catch me. He'd have had to say, hey, this me, this me. Because last time I saw you, Jesus, your flesh was hanging off your body. Last time I saw you, you had been beaten so bad to where you were unrecognizable. And now you tell me, you done took on an earth suit that can come through locked walls. You got to be. What did you do, God? Yeah, what did you do? How did you pull that off? Not only did you get a new body, you got a body that couldn't do what your old body could do. And then to really just put a cherry on top of it, you left certain things on the new body just so we'll know that it's you. So when, so when Thomas come in, we're going to tell Thomas, Jesus, we're going to tell Thomas that you were here. And then Thomas going to say, um, except I can put my hand in the holes. I don't believe that. Now, y'all, I know, I know we're in a difficult moment right now. Thomas said, y'all stressing, anxiety done kicked in, and y'all hallucinating. So I, I, in order for me to believe this here, I got to see it. So here comes Jesus again. So Jesus comes to the room, and then all of a sudden, hey, come on, Thomas, put your hand in. Come on, put your hand in these holes. Do you see what God is doing? Do, do, you, see when, do, do you see when the disciples were out on the boat? And, you know, after Jesus died, you know, before, even before we get here, before, when Jesus died, they went back to doing what they were doing. And then all of a sudden, Jesus called a fish fry. You know, I, 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 I say it, I, I, now I don't know now, this ain't biblical. But I say they had to be black people. Anytime you got fish and chicken, you know, so, so, so we have a fish fry, and, and, and then, you know, disciples look, they're out on the boat, you know, and they look and they see Jesus, man, Jesus over there, you just got a fish fry, you know, just a man, so the new body that Jesus got also can eat fish? You got to be talking to me. Yeah, yeah, go through doors and walls without having to turn, go through a door, you, Jesus, come on, say this here. But then all of a sudden, what we thought was the end turned out to be one of the most triumphant moments in history. Here it is, our Jesus, who they thought they had killed, who they thought they had gotten rid of. He comes back. He comes back. And because he got up, you can get up because he didn't abandon his assignment you don't have to abandon yours because he, he, he felt like if there was another way please let it happen so don't feel bad when you feel like you don't qualify or when you feel like it's too hard that's not the problem the problem is if you just submit yourself to those thoughts and then just tap out when you sit down on who you were born to be, you deny the world the opportunity to receive all the goodness that God placed on the inside of you for you to contribute to the world. 
Aren't you glad he got up? I, I, I'm so glad that, that, that he, he got up, man. I, I'm so glad that when they, they beat him with the cat of nine tails and, and, you know, every time they hit him, they would rip flesh from his body. They had beat him to the point to where he couldn't even carry his own cross. They had to get somebody to help him, not because he was weak, but because he had gone through so much for you and I. Can you hear the, can you hear the nails being beat into his wrist after he had had such a long week? Can you see your Savior can you see his blood spilled all over the ground? Every time they hit him, they pulled flesh from his body. 39. Pow. And then it, it, as if that wasn't enough, he had already been mocked and beat and abused prior to getting there. And then we put him on the cross. Blood dripping everywhere. If you didn't know that was him, you couldn't look up there and say that that's Jesus. Totally unrecognized. But while he was on the cross, as the old people say, you were on his mind. You do understand that even up until the time he gave his spirit permission to leave, he was still at a place to where he could have called in legions of angels and changed the situation. But you were worth it. The ransom that was paid for you. It wasn't close to being a cheap ransom. You were so important that God gave his best. Imagine what the father had to go through. Looking at his son. His perfect son. His son who had never committed one sin. Imagine what the father had to, was going through his mind watching his son pay that price. Imagine what happened, how the father felt. Because Jesus showed how he felt when he took on the sins of the world and he asked the question, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Experiencing a moment that he had never experienced because they had always been together. You've always been connected. But in this one moment, because God the Father cannot be connected to sin in any form, there's a separation in that moment where the Father has to glance away. You were worth it. So when you feel like sitting down, when you feel like, man, as far as you can run, I want you to think about Jesus. Because I can assure you that no matter what life punches you with, you will never be asked to pay the price that Jesus paid. So I need for you to find a way to stay in the game. I need for you to find out what you were born to do, and I need for you to get busy doing it. Because just like, where would we be if Jesus had not gone to the cross? Somebody's lives are hanging in the balance, and, and, and you need to do what you do. Where would they be if you don't answer the call? What about some of your loved ones, some of your family members, some of your friends, some of your coworkers, and some of the people that you're passing by that you don't even know they need you? What about them? What if you don't become? All of us would be held bound if Jesus would have aborted. What about the people that you were put on this planet to impact? Yeah. So for this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, I want to leave you with. Life is going to ask you for something. You need to prepare yourself to answer the call. You were given life.
to accomplish things. Stop bowing out. Stop thinking you know you better than God. Can I tell you something? He'll never give you an assignment that you can't handle. Everything that you need, you already have. You just haven't worked hard enough for it to come forth. Everything you need is right. It's waiting on you. You, you. you call yourself waiting on it, but it's waiting on you. As you begin to move, you will bump right into what you were supposed to do. And you will find out that there's a grace that's waiting on you. There is such a thing as sweatless victory. In that lane, you don't have to compete with anybody. See, sometimes you're competing with people to be them when you can never be them. When really, if you find your spot in life, there's no competition. I don't care how hard I, I try to be somebody else, it won't happen. But every day, my goal to be Leo Davis is just to work hard so that if you could do an autopsy on me when I breathe my last breath and you could measure whether or not I gave the planet everything that God had given me to give it, I would hope you would find me empty. I would hope when the last grain of sand fall out of my hourglass that God would be able to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I would hope that by the time you finish running your race and you cross the finish line, there'll be a trail of trophies because you have decided that you're going to change lives. I would, I would hope that you have the courage to do it. Because Jesus had the courage to do it. And the biggest lesson I think you better grab hold to is Sometime you'll do it and your friend's going to be sleeping. Sometime you're going to do it and there's going to be no cheering squad. Sometime you're going to find yourself out there one minute, they're talking about how great thou are, and then the next minute they're going to hate on you. But you have to have the moment that Jesus had where you, after you done been celebrated, criticized, and you find yourself to where all he took was three people with him, and even and I'm sure he chose the best for, to get done what he needed to get done, and they fell asleep on him. Well, when you realize that sometime in your most trying moment, you might find yourself alone. But don't panic. Because in the natural, you are alone, but sometimes you'll slap dab in the place where you were born to be because sometimes your friends will get in, they will interfere with what God is trying to get done. And you have to have the courage and say it in love. Go ahead and sleep. It's all right. Yeah, go ahead and sleep, baby. Yeah, yeah, I, I've told something to go ahead and sleep. Yeah, yeah, you sleep. I'm determined to make the father proud. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand praise. Well, I assume before I go, because somebody might try to judge me, let me give you. Uh, let me help. Yeah, let me. Let me open this iPad up. Yeah. Uh, take it. Write your scripture down. Uh, Matthew, the 26th chapter, 36 through the 46th verse. That was going to be the verse that we were going to start with. That's talking about them being in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, you know, and, and I, I ain't going to give you all my scriptures, but I just wanted you to have one so you'll say that Pastor Leo did not even open the Bible. <laughs> but I believe that if you bury it in your heart, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth don't speak. I can tell you that I love Jesus when I'm not in front of you. I can tell you that my goal is to please the Father at all times. My goal is to get to know him better than I know Pastor Norman. That's my goal. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be so consumed with what God is saying to you.
to where you don't care what people say, you don't care what they think, you don't have, care who is going with you and who's sitting on the bench because you understand sometimes your greatest moments will require you to do it alone. Just decide you're going to do it. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed. Maybe there's somebody watching on Facebook or YouTube or, or someone in this room who has never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of their lives. Well, I will say that this is your moment. I will say that God loves you so much to where he set this time aside just for you. You heard Deacon Andre say that he, I believe he said he gave his life to the Lord on Easter. Well, what a great day to give your life to Jesus on Resurrection Sunday. So if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, this is your day. This is your day to become a part of the family of God. This is your day to have a life-changing moment. So if you would, please repeat after me. Say, Father God, everybody repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for loving me. Jesus, thank you for paying the price for me. And I choose this day to give my life to you. I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are the Son of God and that you were raised from the dead. And from this day forward, I'm going to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. And then there's another group of you. You have made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life at some point in time. You did confess Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. But you know that you have not been living the Christian life the way that you should. So this is a good day on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. This is a good day for you to rededicate your life. What better day than this day here? God is not mad with you. He loves you. But you do need to make it right. So for those of you that know you need to rededicate your life to the Lord because you have not been living the way that the Bible says you should live, I want you to repeat after me. And if, if, if you would, please, everyone, please repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I choose this day to rededicate my life unto you. I ask forgiveness of every sin that I've committed. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life serving you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you are one of the people that have just given your life to the Lord for the very first time, or if you rededicated your life, we have a little gift for you, a little pamphlet that says, yes. And this little pamphlet is just some instructions based on you. If you find yourself in a situation where you missed the mark, as we call it again, as we call it here in, in, in the Christian family, if you missed the mark where you do something you know you should not have been doing, this is just a good read to tell you how to get back on track. We, we don't say that going forward you will never mess up again. We do say that as soon as you mess up, be quick to repent. Be, be quick to ask God's forgiveness and get back in right standing. That's all that is. Love God enough to where you'll always try to remain in proper standing with him. So if you've just rededicated your life or given your life to the Lord for the very first time, uh, those of you in the room, ask one of our uh, ushers or hostesses on the way out. They'll be glad to put one of these in your hand. And then for those of you that are viewing on Facebook and YouTube, if you have made the decision today for Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life or if you rededicated your life, just let us know in the comment section. Uh, say, that's me, and, and we would be glad to con reach out to you and get one of these uh, pamphlets in your hand. Uh, and, and if you have prayer, those of you that are viewing on Facebook or YouTube, if you want us to pray about something with you, just let us know, and we'll reach out to you, and one of, uh, a member of our team will reach out to you, and we'll be glad to pray with you. So thank you very much for that. We love you, and we are so excited about what God is doing. Give God another big round of applause. Yeah. 
And, and before, we, before we end the service today, we have a new series alert. This, talking about the, 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 the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, it, it, it sparked something in, in, in Pastor Norm and I, and we decided that we're going to do something, continue this journey on. Well, a lot of times we talk about the resurrection, but we don't talk about the power of the blood. The resurrection was, was awesome, but the shed blood of Jesus was designed to do something for your life and my life. So next week, we will be starting a new series titled, It's the Blood for Me. It, I, I'm telling you, I wouldn't miss it. If I, wasn't, if I wasn't preaching it, I'd be sitting in the seat because it's the shed blood of Jesus that open doors for you to obtain certain things in life that's your benefit pack and now you got to see what came with him shedding his blood so 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 i'm i'm telling you i'm excited about it so if i was you if i was you i would miss it give the lord another hand praise